Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous video, I took you through the structure of the CFA program in which I talked about the various subjects that are covered in each level. Today, I'm going to take you through the historical pass rates for the CFA exam and we are also going to discuss certain probable causes for such low pass percentages. As you can see, I have listed on the slide the pass rates for 2015 examinations. In level 1, 42% of the candidates who had appeared for the exam passed. For level 2, 46% of the candidates passed. And for level 3, 53% of the candidates passed. Now, these passing rates are not for those students who had enrolled for the test. These are the students who actually took the test on the exam day. I have also given what was the pass rate for December 2014 CFA level 1 exam and with that was 44%. Now these are relatively high as compared to the uh, preceding few years where it came uh, to around 37 to 39% for level 1 and similar percentages for level 2 and level 3. Now, usually, you know, we don't see such low passing rates uh, for exams. And if you look at these passing rates, you can notice that the highest probability that a student who sits for these exams will pass them on the very first attempt is hardly 10%. Now, that is really low as compared to any other test any other examination that you may have appeared till now in your life. Now, what are the reasons that these pass rates are so low? Now, few of the reasons uh, that could probably be bringing down these rates could be number one, candidates uh, who appear for the CFA exam do not understand the depth with which the questions will be asked. They do not take it seriously. They just consider it to be any other exam like the ones they have taken in the past and then they miserably fail. It's a very tough exam. Each level is tested on a one day paper and it's a six hours exam split in two halves. So the morning session is of three hours and the afternoon session again is of three hours. It is now very difficult for a person to remain focused for those six hours. But time is of essence. You have to uh, solve about 120 questions in um, those three hours. So there are a total of 240 questions in both uh, level one and level two. Level three is a different ball game. We'll discuss it later. Level 1 and level 2, you can imagine uh, answering 120 questions in about 180 minutes means that you have one and a half minute for attempting a question. And you have to remain focused. You have to remember all the assembled information because it hardly happens that you have to recall the courseware of 10 subjects, 10 different topic areas for one paper. That is one sitting. So it is very important that you understand in depth how the exam will be taken, how much dedication is required, how much focus is required and you prepare yourself accordingly. Another reason for uh, failure on the CFA exam is that students do not practice enough. They do not keep sufficient time for doing revision. They do not leave any time for practice. Some students feel that they can continue to revise till the end and at the end of uh, the preparation, they will start practicing the questions. Now that is too late because exam technique is another thing and remembering is another thing. So you have to start practicing early. You have to take down how much time you are actually investing in answering one question and you have to focus on reducing that time with practice. 
then only you will be able to complete the entire exam. Another reason why students would fail on the CFA exam is that they do not prepare intelligently enough. Now, CFA is a very systematic study plan. They have their own books. They also list down learning outcome statements at the beginning of each reading. And these learning outcomes specify whether you have to describe a the topic, whether you have to analyze it, whether you have to do a calculation or you have to do a computation. Now, depending upon that, it is what is expected of you from that topic. So if there is a topic with which you don't only have to do an analysis or a comparison and you end up mugging up the formulas given in that topic, now that is something which I do not recommend as an intelligent preparation. So you have to focus on, on each of the LOS while you are preparing for your CFA exam, which most students fail to do. Another reason why many students fail on the CFA exam is that they do not guess intelligently enough. Now, uh, why am I talking about guessing? I should be talking about understanding the courseware thoroughly and knowing the answer of each question. Well, that is not possible. You cannot possibly know 100% of the paper. There are trick questions. There are questions which are going to confuse you. So that is the point when you have to guess intelligently. So around 5 to 10% of the paper will be such in which you have to make an intelligent guess. You know that there will be three options, especially in level one and level two. Each question will have three options. So you have to think which one to rule out immediately and then to make a guess between the two, increasing your probability of answering a question correctly, which you did not know at all, which you are making a blind guess for. The last thing that I believe uh, students make a mistake in on the exam day is that they do not read the question properly. And this is usually due to panic. This is also due to the pressure of time. You may notice sometimes when you're working on the computer and you're really engrossed in your work and suddenly a pop-up comes. 90% of us do not read the pop-up. We just click on OK and move ahead because we are so concerned in doing our work. Now, the same attitude affects drastically on your exam paper because when you read the question, you are also looking at the answers at the same time and you, oh yes, this one I know very well and you just uh, mark the answer and you move ahead. However, the question may have asked for something else because sometimes the questions include keywords such as which is the most appropriate or the least appropriate or which of the following is not one of the characteristics. So you have to read the question carefully. You have to look at the keyword and understand what the question is asking before you move ahead to answering the question. So if you keep these things in mind, and of course, if you don't panic, if you remain calm and composed, then the probability of uh, taking the test and passing is a little high, is a little higher than what you see on the screen. So uh, I would suggest that uh, you keep all these points in mind and you continue watching my videos so that I can keep giving you tips like this in the future. Now, the second set of videos that you will be looking at are for those students who have decided to pursue CFA and they now want to see how they should go about the preparation. So I will talk about structuring your study sessions, to focus in the correct direction and prepare intelligently. Thank you very much. I will be looking forward to seeing you in the next portion of this series.